Hi, I'm Aaron, the owner of Brisbane Yamaha, and today, wheel bearings. Cost you about 22 bucks for a wheel bearing. Here's a boat that you wouldn't get much change out of 150 grand. 22 bucks can bring you unstuck. Recently, I was down in Arnhem Land. Yeah, I was in Arnhem Land. And Dan will show you a photo because I had a wheel bearing failure. Could have been catastrophic. Go! Oh, Fuck! Go! Go! Go, 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 go! Go! Easy! <laughs> I'm talking to it! Stop! <laughs> did, you, did you think I was going to get us? Yeah. Yes. Watch smoke! Something's smoking. Don't break down here. Go! Was it your brain? Oh, I've got, I've got some, some fire! Back, back, back. But what I always take and even though I own a marine dealership, even though I changed the bearings before I was there, it's 4,000 k's to Arnhem Land, and I had a failure, but I could fix it. So let me just show you a couple of things first, before I show you how to change wheel bearings, because it's easy if you've got everything. In the car, in my car, I always carry a hammer, a coal chisel, a split pin, and some grease. Right? And obviously bearings. Now, if you've got bearings, a split pin, you have to have a coal chisel. Without a coal chisel and you're using a screwdriver or something, it's gonna be hard. But let's just have a look, and this will be quick. Here is the hub. Over here, Dan. That goes in there, yes? Now this has disc brakes, but you may not have that out a bit with the brakes. You've got this bit on your boat. So, let's have a look at the back. Basically in the back here, you can see, you'll have a bearing. Now, they'll either be Ford or Holden, but you check that. Now, see this how thin edge, thick edge. The thick edge goes in first. Now, and then see that bearing? will drop into it. But what you'll do is, you'll tap that in. Workshop mechanics have one of these tools to make it easy to bang down. I just get there and I might use the other old bearing and tap it into place. Just get it going and move it round and it's got a seat right at the bottom, right? Oh, bugger it, I'll whack it in. You can hear that hit. That's where that bearing goes. Now we'll grease this bearing. If you're out in the bush, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it in your hand and you're gonna go like this. Old school way of doing it and you're gonna load every bearing with grease. We have a little machine. The undo that, put it in, move it up and down and it fills it, right? Big difference. Now that bearing goes in there and then the dust cover. That dust cover is what stops all the water coming into your boat and that goes in here, seals it off. On the front, what there'll be, a bearing, the thick end, and I'll tell you, if you miss this up, you'll be lucky to get it out, you'll have to grind it out. That will go in, hit in, all the way to the bottom again, bearing being greased, drops in, and then what you'll have is the nut, which you do up, and you wind it up until it's tight, and then just back it off. Then you'll put a pin through, fold it back, and we're gonna show you this. And then you have the other cover that goes off to stop water. That's all there is, is in the bearings. That's all there is. We've got this beautiful boat. Have a look up here, it's even got TV. This is a dead set trophy boat. This bloke fishes his heart out and he drives this boat like I stole it. So, we can see, see that wobbling? Oh, let's just tighten them up, no. Let's just change the bearings. So here's Corey, one of our mechanics. Corey, let's take that dust cover off and let's have a look inside there. So we'll take, that dust cover's just come off. If you, whoa, straight up, we can see there's a problem. Wrap that one off and let's have a look in there, Corey. Okay, nice and clean, blue grease. Now, grease, high temperature 
grease. It's very important. Some people might call it aluminium grease. High temperature grease. So you need high temperature bearing grease. Anything else is not going to work because it'll all go to water and it'll just leak out. Now people, this one here, someone, probably an old bloke, is going to go, oh, he's put, he's put it into water. You, you're driving miles, you get hot bearings, you put it into water and the heat then sucks water into your bearings. That's true. If you've done three, 300 Ks and you go into a fishing spot, you normally stop anyway. But you show me someone with a winch on the front of their boat and I'll show you someone that doesn't back their boat in far enough into the water. So what we can see there is there's the nut, there's the split pin. So we'll simply take the split pin off and because you can see in here that that grease isn't normal, it's because it's got water in it, right? And that water, it can happen for a lot of reasons. It's just a failure, it just means it's got to be changed. When you come and get a service at Brisbane Yamaha, we'll check your, your bearings and we'll change it. We do thousands of bearings. Now, when I was in Arnhem Land, mine all welded on. So those cases you knock in, because they were so far gone and I had the kids, and when you watch the video, it's a little bit funny, um, you'll see. So I had to whack them out and that's why you need a cold chisel. If you've got a cold chisel, you can fix most things on the road. Okay, now let's undo that nut. Okay, so what we've got here is disc brakes. So which just adds another thing. So now what we've got to do is take the caliper off. So do that there, Corey. From doing this, you will be able to fix it. Now, when you have a boat that doesn't have brakes, you won't have to go to this. You'll go straight to the next step which is taking the hub off. Sometimes you'll find that it's all flogged out and some people take hubs and stab axles and all sorts of things with them. I find a, a set of bearings or two and, and you're very, very safe. So we'll undo the locking bolts which hold the, the caliper on, change them every year. Basically, if you do it every year when you get a service, you just will not have another problem. You know, because if a bearing, a wheel bearing, I was talking to a guy from the council and he was an engineer. And he said, Aaron, do you know how long a wheel bearing should last if it's maintained? I said, I don't know, how long? Three years? He said, forever. Forever. But they don't. And they don't because we get water, because they get slack, because we don't maintenance them enough. But they can last for an enormous amount of time and they will if you fit them properly. You know, dust covers, checking for water. You can some bearing buddies. I have bearing buddies on lots of mine. And what's a bearing buddy? Bearing buddy, instead of this dust cap, there's another cap that comes on. It's got a grease nipple. You fill it up and it pressurises with grease. And the idea is that that doesn't allow water in. I would dare say if this had bearing buddies, this bearing wouldn't have failed. But these caps, nothing wrong with it. Perfectly fine. Corey's going to slide, slide that. Did you see that? So he's undone the two back bolts. And then he's just pulled the caliper off. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Now let's take that, let's take that nut off. And you can see finger tight. And I was telling the viewers that what we do, Corey, is when we're putting one back on, we do it up extra tight and then just back it off. Back it off. And we'll get to that. I forgot before also to tell you there's a washer that goes on the end. So for all you YouTubers that go, well, oh, you forgot the washer. There is a washer. Come back here, Dan. Come back with me. We shoot all this live, so don't blame me. But that bearing on here, washer, nut, split pin, okay? That washer holds that bearing there. Now, so what we've got here is the axle. Have a look and you can see the size. The first bearing, that's the end of the dust cover that we showed you earlier. And then it's a tapered spline, that's why the back bearing is bigger in the front one. Okay, so we look at this, we inspect it to see if it's scored, if it's been damaged. If you've had a major failure, you'll see it could be welded on there. Sometimes we have to angle grind them off, but a cold chisel, you can whack it on the highway. Now that, that I would say that that um, dust cover's rooted. Yeah, 
technical term for to be replaced. Now, in here, you can see, what about this hub, okay? There's the front bearing. Can you see any collapsed? Not really. It, it's just they've worn out. So it's not like a lot of times you'll see this when you take it off on a bad one and all the bearings have come out. So, okay, take that one out and let's whack the old bearings out. Cold chisel, just on his foot. You could use a piece of wood. You've got the sharp edge on your cold chisel and he's just knocked that bearing out. Now, you go, oh, that was easy. Well, it's easy because Corey's done hundreds of them. If you get on that back edge with a cold chisel, that's why I said you're rooted without a cold chisel. You have to have a cold chisel with a nice square edge on it because it bites on that lip. Let's hook the other one out. Corey doesn't like getting dirty hands either. He probably should have taken another job. Bit, that one's a bit tougher. And this is a real life thing. You haven't been out. And this is what it's like when I do it. Bashing it, hitting it. And what he's doing is hitting that lip. You can see of that bearing to knock it out. And there it goes. And he smashed it to bits. <laughs> which is no problem all we had to do is not reusable right and if you were reusing and just repacking the bearings you'd leave that race in there now would you clean that out now corey yeah, 100%. so now we'll clean out all the old grease and water and stuff out of it Right, now what are we going to do, Corey? So I'm going to punch out the, the smaller bearing race that that bearing sits in, which is on that side, so I'll punch that out. So now we're going to get that, now we're going to get the inside one out. Watch him belt this out. Have a look in there, Dan. There's only a little lip, little tiny lip. That's why it's hard. Okay, so you put it on there. And you feel like you you feel like you're ruining everything at this stage because you're hitting it hard to get that bearing to move. Right, out. I'll give you a little tip. If you put that in the wrong way and you put the skinny one in first, you're probably going to have to take it to a mechanic to get it out because you use like a little Dremel because you can't get, and then you can't get the cold chisel onto that lip. Disaster. Fat end goes in. Do you remember that? You'll never make a mistake. Now what are you going to do, Corey? So I'll grab my bearing packer and we'll pull the new uh, bearings out of the packet, grease them up. Put the new cones. Okay, we'll, so what we'll do, you grab everything and we'll yep. we'll see you back in a second. So what kind of bearing have you got? Is it fold, Ford or Holden? Well, a little thing we do here, a Holden bearing will only go to that. So are these Holden? No. Well, i got fat fingers. <laughs> you show me. So right. he says, this Corey, this is how we just check. Holden bearings will go between your first knuckle and your big knuckle. Ford bearings, which have a larger axle, go over your big knuckle on your finger. But the, someone will tell you with the bearings and the ideal thing is you take it out. If you've bought a boat from us, we'll tell you what kind of bearings they are. You can buy some bearings from us. Yeah, if you knocked one of these bearings, you take it to any auto place, marine dealer, they'll look at the bearing and tell you what it is. Yep. If you get it wrong, it won't fit. Well, you can probably put a Ford on a Holden, but you're not gonna get far. So you've got your new lip seal, which goes on the base of the axle. And it does go one way. You can't go with the lip to the inside. It's always got to be lip to the outside. So when it goes and seals onto there. You can see there, and so it's holding it in and that's full of grease. And then this forge is in and that fits tight onto the back of the, the axle. And that holds all your grease. You've got your small, 
you got your tapered end that is where your bearing will sit in and roll in it will not go the other way it has to go like that in there okay yep now to get that in there we've got our bearing race tool You could hear that that solid clank was when it got in. If you're using the other, the other, the old bearing race to hit in, or just tap it in, and just do it easy, and just make sure you don't hit hurt that edge. But they're stainless steel, and they're very hard wearing a bearing. Okay. Flip it over and basically. Just going to do the same. Repeat the process, but with the larger one. So these tools are brilliant, but you won't do too many. Our guys do thousands, so they've got that right down to the base you can hear that seated all the way in now you want it seated and you probably could have it less and when you do the nut up it can wind it in but we're going to pack the hub and then put the hub onto the axle so you don't put the bearings all on the axle and try and get the hub on okay so we've got high pressure grease yep High temperature grease, yep. Don't, don't be shy with the grease. Marine purposes, grease is good. Lots of grease. Like so. Lots of rags, keeping the dirt out. with your bearing packer if you've got one. Put your bearings in. And you want to push down on this and in between each roller of the bearing you'll see grease come through. That's when you know that the bearing's packed sufficiently. Push down on it and you see the grease is coming through. And do you always pack two at a time? I always pack two at a time. Okay, now, if you have a look at that, the only other way to do it, and the old way, you put a big dob of grease in here, and you get the bearing, and you run it in, and you turn the rollers. And you build it in, and you force that grease into the roller. Okay, but we're not doing it, because I don't like dirty ends. All right. We'd take the... Wiping it down with a Guns N' Roses t-shirt. Who knows why? But you can see that's nice and clean. Corey's inspected, it's not worn, that's fine. Okay. So what we'll do is chuck the big bearing. That's held the bearing in, but that little lip there also is holding it. So the bearing can't come out the end because you've got that lip. So you've got the inside of the hub and then you've got the, the axle that's holding it. And you'll see how that seal goes over and that little lip there and that's what the inside of the, the, the back bearing is on. Okay, now we slide it back on or we'll put the other... Plenty of grease, you can't have too much. Someone will probably tell me you can, but anyway, you'll get trouble for not having enough. And if there's too much, it'll just squeeze out everywhere and I'll go, how come we're spending so much money on grease? Now, and now, do you see? We just slide that whole thing on. And there's the bearings. Right. Now, have I stopped? Oh, here it is. <laughs> so we... That washer is actually crucial, all right? Because that holds the bearing in. The bearing actually spins and the inside doesn't, but the outside does and the inside sort of held with that bearing. Um, and it's doing a lot of work. So, okay, now we'll screw the nut on. 
and then tell the viewers how how tidy you're going to make it. All right, so I basically tighten it to the point where the rotor does not spin, and then back it off until the weight of I go to the weight of my shifter sits in in this position, and then you find the nearest pole basically. So we'll tighten it up tight, which will push those bearings on if they're not. We know they are anyway because they hit. So he's tightened that up, it's not moving. And then he backs it off. Backs it off. And I do it to, basically to your shifter. Can't sort of put any more weight on it, which gives you enough tension on the bearing that there is no play. And then from there, with your new split pin, we will find the nearest hole. Show them how you bend that over. Now, if that pin, I've seen people use nails and things, it's too dangerous to use a nail. One of your wheels will unwind that nut and one will do it up as you're driving along. That split pin is holding that whole thing on, all right? Because if that split pin's not there, that bolt will come up, that nut will come undone straight away. One will tighten up and the other one will unloose. So it's very important and that's why I said in my kit, new split pin. It's in, it's folded over, it's holding the nut, there's no force on it, nothing's going to happen, but if you have a split pin that's too short or it's not there or you've used some cable tie or something dodgy, Scheisenhausen. Okay, now you've got new dust cover, we put a bit of grease in there. Yep. Even if that was a bearing buddy, you would do, you'd put it on the same. We have a little machine, a little tool that hits it on. You just hit it on with a hammer and it will just work. And that's done. So we put a new dust cover and then it's a matter of just sliding the brakes. Now those brakes, we haven't adjusted the brakes. We haven't done anything. So that caliper is just going to slide on. Show them how easy that is. And you're going to do a couple of bolts up. If it wasn't, how would you open up those calipers? So what you do is you crack that bleed nipple and put a hose onto it so the fluid will drain into a container. And then with just a pair of multi-grips, you'll just be squeezing that piston back. To open it up. But hopefully, if you haven't changed your brake pads, right, that will just slide back on eventually. And obviously there's a brake pad, both sides of it. And then you just wiggle it, goes on, two bolts. Always grease your bolts as well. Then it's easy, they'll always come unstuck, uh, uh, undone if you put a bit of grease on them. You've got a lot of heat coming here. Now, oh, but why have you got heat? Bearing shouldn't create any heat. No, but your brake does. So when you, when you have a disc brake, or you have a brake like on a caravan, when you apply the brakes, this whole hub heats up. So sometimes people have said, oh, the brakes are really hot. Yeah, that's because you've been using the brakes. Now, if you, don't have, if you haven't got a brake trailer, you'll be able to touch this with your hand. So what I do to check bearings, while I'm driving man, I fill up with servo and I come and I just get my hand and I touch that and I see if it's hot. Shouldn't be very hot at all. Now, if you're using the brakes, you've been on hills, it can heat up from the hub and come to there, but it's still certainly not gonna be hot enough that you spit on it and, the, and, and it sizzles, right? Then you've got a problem. And when you do a bearing in the middle of nowhere, it is a major problem. You've got a trophy boat, and you and twenty two dollar bearing or twenty buck bearing, whatever it is. So, I hope that's helped you. Hope I don't see you on the road changing the bearing. 
And for all the people when I was in Arnhem Land that stopped to ask if I was right, thanks you very much. We'll see you next time.